and welcome to Mark Allen Cook's Your Dinner. We're going to have a great time tonight. Uh, uh, I, a couple of months ago, I met and interviewed on uh, our sister program, uh, Late Night Health, uh, Carolina Schneider. She's a registered dietitian. She's known as the Green RD. We're going to find out what an RD is. We're going to talk about her background because she's from Brazil. And we're going to have a whole bunch of fun as we make an Asian-inspired dish. So we're going to walk it to you. I'll tell you why I said that in just a moment as late night, as late night health, as Mark Allen Cooks takes to the air. And welcome to Mark Allen Cooks. Uh, we hope you're having a good day. We're going to make a very healthy vegan diet for you today. And we have a couple of new things. Um, a couple of new things here and over here about right there. Okay. That's our bug. Uh, we have a brand new logo, Mark Allen Cooks. And... Um, would love to have your response and what you think of it. Uh, I have to say thank you to Norman Ross. Norm uh, has been my art guy for years and years and years, and he inspired me to do one, and uh, I just we couldn't get it right. And Anyway, we came up with this. It was, it was great. So I give Norm all the credit, and i like to thank John Harper in Florida for saying, get yourself an apron. So I did. So we're all set all ready to go here at Mark Allen Cooks. Let's bring in our guest chef, Carolina Schneider. Hello, Carolina. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure. We're looking forward to this. We're going to do this great thing with broccoli and and. I've got chopped cashews to put on the to on top. That's what I because those are my favorite nut, right? And, Perfect. Mine uh, too. Got some, yours too? Oh, good. Do you know who makes who grows more cashews in any other country? Brazil. No. Vietnam. Go figure. Really? Yeah. I just yeah. learned something new. They're and they're terrific. By the way, if you have a comment, if you're watching us right now, you can comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know how we look. Um, you know, I have been blessed because I've been surrounded by beautiful women. Uh, I've got Carol right here in the studio. I have Carolina right here next to me. And um, she is in Santa Monica, California, by the way. All right, let us begin. Um, uh, what is an RD to start with? And then we'll start cooking. Absolutely. So RD stands for registered dietitian. So I had to go to school for many, many, many years to finally get these credentials. Um, but essentially we have um, a master's in nutrition and dietetics, and we have to do a whole year of internship in a hospital. And then we have to pass a board exam to finally become a registered dietitian, which is a health professional who can help you with nutrition needs, in a clinical setting in hospitals with people who are sick um, and care for their nutrition needs, as well as in a private setting, you know, working one-on-one. -on -one. I personally work with brands, um, food brands. So very excited um, to, sh to show some of the brands here that we'll be using today and um, ready to start cooking with you, Mark. We're gonna eat super healthy tonight. Lots of right. veggies. And, and, and you're gonna direct me, right? So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna take my vegetables. Uh, we've got broccoli and there's some red cabbage underneath and underneath that I have some uh, uh, mushrooms and we have some red uh, pepper here. I'm sorry. Perfect. Yes. Healthy really man. Really good. Right? All right. And I have the recipe in front of me. So, um, I've got, I'm going to do that right here. I have the, uh, uh, I've got some cubed extra firm uh, tofu, right? And whoa, Perfect. almost spilled everything. 
And I also Yeah, Mark, mean, and I like Yeah. Sorry, I was just Go going on. to say I like extra firm because tofu as, you know, if your uh, if your viewers are not familiar with it, there it comes in different types. Um, silk and tofu and you know it's a little bit softer for blending into sauces when we're cooking in something such as what we're doing tonight um, right. where tofu is sort of you know the meat of uh, the protein of the plate I personally like the extra firm because I like that consistency better and it holds better when you are cooking with it you know it doesn't just crumble all apart um, so I definitely recommend but there's so many brands and really you can't go wrong with extra firm tofu whichever kind you you like right. to get. So I put uh, low salt, uh, uh, authentic from Japan soy sauce. And then I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of Chinese chili sauce. And I'm going to toss this together. Beautiful. And as you are doing this, I'll let your audience know that Tofu is also a little bit bland, to be honest. I think that's why it, it doesn't always get the best reputation because if you don't season well, it really doesn't taste like much, which can be a benefit if you are cooking with tofu. You can really personalize you know, to your taste buds. So you can really marinate tofu into any type of marinade that you like, um, and make it spicy, make it you know, a little bit sweeter. Um, so, so here we have this Asian inspired sauce that, which I personally love. And again, it's really important to marinate and season your tofu well so that it absorbs that flavor, but it is extremely nutritious, Mark. Um, tofu is one of the absolute best sources of plant-based protein. I want to say hi to Heidi, uh, uh, Nickerson Levy in Louisville. She is in the building. Wish you were. It's been a long time, Heidi. And Howard Sandler from Reseda, California asks, how are we? We are fine. All right. We are, um, I've, I've marinated this a little bit. I'm going to move us over to, I'm going to cover this so I don't spill it. Because as we all know, I am somewhat of a klutz. There's no question about that. Okay. So I'm going to move over here. And... Um, we have, I happen to have two kinds of sesame oil. Um, I've got toasted and I have regular. They're both organic. Which one should I use to cook the, the, uh, the tofu? I forget that you're like a chef. You have all the ingredients and more. Um, I would say the original. I feel like the toasted would be really delicious, but I personally haven't tried in this recipe. So, um, you know, maybe we'll go with the original for now, but the toasted, I'm sure will add a nice flavor as well. I don't think you can go too wrong with this. We're adding a small amount. It's really just to coat the pan. Um, and, you know, if you are on some restrictive diet for whatever reason and you need to avoid oil or lower your intake of oil you're welcome to use water um, I personally love the oil I think it adds flavor it, it oh. makes it a little bit easier to cook but yeah water absolutely it it does yeah oil I know it's bad I know that it's fat it's all fat I get that but uh, it but, it tastes good, and you know we we eat, you know we we eat for taste. You know what I forgot to do while we're heating the the uh, the wok, I forgot to toast. What is a Brazilian toast? Saúde. Saúde. There you go, like salute. Saúde. So, got it. All right. Well, close enough. And we are drinking <laughs> sparkling water. Because we're alcohol free at the Schneider residence uh, in Santa Monica during the week. Just during the week. Friday night, you can give me a glass of wine. And we're going to talk about that too. I had a question very quickly. Uh, can you suggest a substitute for tofu? She's been advised to stay away from all soy products. Um, is there something that she could use? Absolutely. I want to talk about being advised to stay away from soy products in a second, but you can really use any protein of your choice. So I am vegan. That's for that's why I use tofu. However, if you consume chicken, 
shrimp or any seafood or meat, you know, you're welcome to use it. I usually recommend that people choose a lean source of protein um, and that's why I love tofu. But by all means, any protein of your choice, if you're consuming animal products, it would work just is there, as well. Is there a, a plant-based soy substitute that's similar? Um, so with without soy, it's a little bit tough. I guess you could try um, chickpeas or any legumes. Um, honestly, I don't know how that would work. Um, tempeh is a great choice. I'm putting this in. Yummy. So yeah, tempeh mark is a great choice for stir fries, but tempeh is also soy based. Right. So you know, if you have a soy allergy, by all means, you you should definitely avoid soy. Um, otherwise, you know, soy is an extremely nutritious and uh, uh, benefits your health tremendously. Actually, even women's health. I know there's a historically we thought soy was bad for our health because of estrogen but soy does not have estrogen it has phytoestrogens which is the plant version that we have seen in research in the last 15 20 years that is tremendously beneficial for preventing breast cancer in women um, and other types of cancer in men because it essentially lowers your um, levels of human estrogen in the body so it blocks real estrogen from getting in so it's actually extremely beneficial for health and, and cancer prevention as well um but i was going to say actually mark they could use mushrooms you know we could do Ooh. protobello mushrooms that would be a great substitute it's not very high in protein but i do think it has a meaty type of it, texture so i think it does have a little bit answer. of protein i believe doesn't it mushrooms yeah it, it has I a small mushrooms. amount Right. But it's it's uh, it's delicious, and you know I use it in this recipe in addition to the tofu. Um, it's a great source of B vitamins and some minerals, so I definitely think it would work beautifully in this recipe if you cannot have soy. Now I may have put too much of the sauce in, so we're not going to braise this. It's not going to braise. It'll taste great. Perfect. Which is fine, it would be a little bit on the softer side, but honestly, I personally like that as well. Sometimes I just, if I don't have a lot of time, right. I will just add everything into the wok and the tofu as is. It will be a little bit um, softer, but it totally works. It's, I think the flavor is the key there, right? That having that marinade really helps. You, uh, by the way, um, you, you called, it said that I'm a chef. I'm just a foodie. Okay, I'm, I'm not trained. I, I love to eat. And um, as I say often, I, I like my own cooking. And I guess in our marriage, I have done most of the cooking uh, throughout our time, unless we take out, you know, or take in, take in, take out. Hmm. Well, <laughs> right. Uh, I had one thing uh, other to say, and we'll go back to the walk. And that is when I said during our opening, we're going to walk it to you. I have been watching old Laugh-In uh, TV shows. And, uh, and so they used to say, sock it to me. And so that was my, my, my addition, if you will, or my takeoff of, of that. I see. You're too young <laughs> to remember Laugh-In. So moving over here, how long does this need to uh, cook? It is. It's, it's not not long. I would say five, eight minutes. Um, you really just want to get it a, a little bit on the crusty side. If there's too much liquid there, it's not a big deal. Maybe just um, set it to higher heat. But, you know, tofu, you can eat it as is. You can eat it raw. It's completely safe to eat it raw. It's a fermented product, um, soy mm -hmm. product. So it, it Health-wise, it's totally fine raw, but I do think right. that just braising it a little bit helps with that consistency, making it a little bit brown and, and crunchy if you may, but five to eight minutes should be plenty. Well, it's been in for a couple of minutes. Carol, you're good at timing. Am I? Yeah. Should I take it out? So I'm going to take that out. And then we can set that aside and we can use obviously the same wok and with that remaining of the sauce, maybe add a little bit more of oil just to coat, you know, the veggies. 
And we can okay. add all the veggies in there. Easy peasy. All right. It smells great. I have to tell you, it really does. All right. I wish I was there so I could eat it. You know, you're only 30 minutes away. Maybe I'll stop by if you guys save me right? some leftovers. All right, you got it. There will be. All right, I'm going to add, uh, should I use the toasted or? Maybe try the toasted. I really don't think you can go wrong. That would probably add a nice. All right. A nice. Uh, the toasted has to a, a more, it, it's a stronger flavor. So we'll try that. You may need a little bit less. Yeah. So I've got done that. And I'm going to put in now the, um, uh, what am I doing? I'm going to saute the vegetables you're, now, right? Yeah, you're adding all the veggies. All, all right. the so, veggies. So we've nice. got a potpourri of color in there. Beautiful. I love nature. Look at all these beautiful colors. Uh, everything is organic. Okay. I love that. Let's all eat more veggies. So, Mark, I wanted to talk about this part of the, the recipe um, sure. and emphasize that truly any vegetables will work. Um, you know, Mark and I talked about this recipe and we thought this was a great combination of veggies for a stir fry. Um, more, more traditional, we may say. Um, however, you are welcome to use any vegetables. So I wanted to show um, why you're you're making this. I love buying um, pre-shredded or pre-cut, I guess, um, vegetables. So it comes with Brussels sprouts, broccoli, um, carrots. It's all done for you. So if you are running, you know, out of time, or if you're very busy, and you know, let's say just the specific night that you come home and you need a really quick meal, even quicker than what you did because you had to cut and, and prep all those veggies, then you know, feel free to use a bag of shredded vegetables. They even sell stir fry type vegetables. You didn't just, tell me. That would have been a lot easier. I spent two and a half hours chopping and cutting. <laughs> but yours is so fresh. <laughs> that it was makes my you appreciate exercise. Food. Yes. It made me it, it was my exercise for the day. All right. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do prefer to have it fresh. Um, nutritionally speaking also, if it's pre-cut, you may lose some of the nutrients uh, because it's in contact with oxygen. So if you do have time and you have, you know, produce in your house, feel free to chop away. Um, <laughs> but I like to keep a, a plan B always, Mark. I think, you know, always have a plan A and plan B. The plan B is, hey, I'm super busy. You know, I don't have much time. I just got home. I'm tired. I need to go to bed. Let me do something super, super simple. We, um, uh, how many walks do you have? Do you I only have one real walk. I have two. And they're older than you are. We did a TV show years ago with a walk. And I got a walk, you know, we... That's, That's got to be 30 amazing. years That's ago. That's the good stuff. You know, yeah. I do think the appliances back then were much better. I go to my mom's house in Brazil, and she has a blender that is also older than me, and it works beautifully. Meanwhile, I buy these fancy blenders that are so expensive. They cost an arm and a leg, and they break in five years. So yeah. I do, do think that's um, something to hold on to. Uh, we want to say hello to Tom Martin as well. He says it looks like a good recipe. And I want to say hi to, um, uh, to, your, to your mom, and who's in Brazil, right? We yes. let, hola. Yes. I, I, I don't know if that, oh, no, it's Portuguese. That's Spanish. Oi. I don't know. How do you say that? You just say, oi. Oi. That's, oi. All right. Like oi, um, ve. Oi, ve. Yes. Okay. Car Carolina and I, as I said, we have a, a, a interesting backgrounds. Her grandparents, grandfather came from um, uh, Germany. Mine came from Poland and settled in Argentina and then moved and immigrated to the U.S. Guy, does that look beautiful? 
gorgeous. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? I'm doing I'm a good job. You, you're doing an amazing job. It's so colorful. Let me tell you a fun fact about bell peppers. You have your red bell peppers there. Mark, yes. so, you know, people, when they think of vitamin C, they think of oranges because they are a great source of vitamin C. But one cup of cut or um, cubed, however you slice, um, one cup of bell peppers has more than 200% your daily needs for vitamin C. Wow. So that one cup that you add in the recipe already met all your daily needs for vitamin C on top of all the other veggies that you have in there. Maybe you had some berries for breakfast. So your vitamin C is on point today, Mark. Does it, does it cook out the vitamin no. C? So that's actually a really great question and I've read a lot of studies on this. Um, it really depends on the type of vegetable. So some vegetables, um, bell peppers actually are more nutritious when they're cooked, whereas some other vegetables, most of leafy greens are more nutritious when they are raw. So it really truly depends. However, the vegetables are so nutrient dense that even when you do lose some of it it's not significant you know you're still getting probably more than 100 percent your your daily needs of, of vitamin c if that happens now i will say that if you boil vegetables in water most of your water soluble vitamins which um vitamin c is one of them right they they uh, essentially leach into the water so if you're not using that water for let's say a soup or a broth then you are removing a lot of the nutrition and it's just all going into the water so I don't recommend boiling vegetables um, as a cooking method unless you are going to use that water for something um, a better approach is to steam your vegetables that's the absolute best actually microwaving and steaming you know on a stove those are the best right. ways to we, uh, I don't, I don't, I used to boil, well, my mother used to boil, I'm sorry, mom, um, like Brussels sprouts, and they were gray, and I hated them, and mm. I make them now, little olive oil, and I roast them in the oven, and I think they're, they're, they're great, right? They're uh, so way. delicious that way, I agree, I think that's the best way to eat Brussels sprouts. I also add mustard seed, yellow mustard seed on top and garlic. I have to try that. Oh, it's... I, I must try that. I love mustard seeds. So I take, I take the, the broccoli, I put it in a large bag, put a little olive oil and shake it up. Then I throw in the mustard seed and garlic, which I forgot to put in. So I'm going to put that in right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perfect. A great anti-inflammatory food, garlic. Right. And great to protect your immune system. We've got that. I have in our microwave seeds of change, which you recommended, um, a uh, quinoa and brown rice. Perfect. I'm going to nuke that for 90 seconds and uh, hope it doesn't mess up my microwave. If it does, you'll have to come over to clean it. Um, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Um, I, oh, we gotta make, we got to add the, the, other, the sauce to this, right? Yes, that, to your veggies. Um, well, we're making the, pe the peanut sauce separately, and then we yes. can mix it all in. So yeah. we're going to whisk all the ingredients for the peanut sauce in a small bowl, and you can just whisk it with a fork or with a, you know, an actual whisk. Or you can blend it, it if you want to get more fan you know, fancy. All right, but, so I'm going to move over to here. We have two jars. We're finishing up one jar of peanut butter. Mm. I like that's crunchy. I eat every day. Um, Is for, it? And that's actually wow. great in this in this recipe because, you know, it's like having ch chopped peanuts in there, which is usually what they add in stir fries, you know, as a topping. So I think that chunky peanut butter definitely works or smooth peanut butter. I would just say for people watching, if you are, buying peanut butter, make sure to read the ingredients list. So peanut butter is actually a very nutritious food, you know, when consuming the correct amounts. But the problem with peanut butter is that most of the, you know, traditional brands have palm oil or other types of oil. They have salt and sugar. 
so much sugar, so much salt. Yeah. Exactly. So um, All right. just make sure you read the ingredients when you're. I've got. Your... Uh, I'm going to put in some. Whoops. Nope. That, that was. Oh, here's the spoon I wanted to use. I'm putting in some maple syrup. Perfect. And this is real maple syrup. It's not fake. <clears throat> I love it. Hundred percent pure. Great ingredients. Yeah, right out of the tree. I'm going to mix that up a little bit right here. Let's see what else are we putting in here. Putting some lime. Uh, um, which, what are we putting in next? Oh, the lime. Whoa. Okay, I'm going to cut the lime. I'm going to show you guys something that I just got, and that is I have a new juice squeezer. We had an old one, and it it fell apart. Oh, that's the way to do it. All right. There is almost nothing better than the smell of fresh mm -hmm. lime. And that's here in California, free. we don't put that in the garbage anymore. We don't. Where yeah. do we put it? We uh, recycle all the, 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 the you know, the skin, the, all that stuff. So. Uh, what, Carol? Nope. There right. you go. Nice. So I'm not whisking this. Anything else go That's in here nice. that I'm forgetting? I've got the Maybe. peanut. I've got yes. the maple Some syrup. Chili sauce. Chili, garlic, chili, yep. And some soy sauce. Got it. Oh, you know, yeah. I love making this at home, Mark, because unfortunately the peanut sauces out there that are already ready to eat that you can purchase at a grocery store have a lot of added ingredients that you really don't need and that turn that peanut sauce into something perhaps unhealthy. So I love making my own. Um, peanut butter is actually an excellent source of plant-based protein as well. So this meal is really high in protein um, for really anyone, if you are eating plant-based or not. It is absolutely very filling and very delicious. All right, it still looks really nice. I'm gonna yeah. turn that down even lower. I'm gonna now, I guess our sauce is ready, right? Yeah, you can. You put some soy sauce in there? Yes. Perfect. And, and we I'm already put that added the garlic. Yes. We've actually added extra garlic. We will have uh, Carolina's um, recipe posted tomorrow on YouTube. I'm going to stir this up a little bit. Uh, I am using a real metal wok, and you have to have something to hold on to it. Mm, gets hot. This looks so beautiful, Mark. You know, this meal is such an easy way to get so many vegetables in your day. Um, for your audience watching, we really want to aim for at least, at the very, very least, three servings of vegetables per day and two servings of fruits per day. So that's five servings. Of fruits and vegetables I recommend more than that um, one serving is roughly one cup of chopped vegetables so just to give you an idea you have you easily have 10 servings of <laughs> vegetables in this one meal so I love it for that reason now I try to eat plant-based once a week I do eat everything I, I limit my pork and my beef most of the time um, but every now and then, I crave it. Uh, I, we eat a lot of chicken, uh, and we also eat a lot of fish. Okay, that's all right. I mean, I would say fish, perhaps, is the the best option when it comes to animal proteins, health wise. Um, fish and eggs. So I would focus on those, and then you know you don't have to go plant based, but just eating more plants on a daily basis, doing plant-based once a week is wonderful, but then on the other days of the week, even though you're eating meat or animal products, just adding 
vegetables to all your meals and eating fruits throughout the day, any more legumes. So beans, chickpeas, lentils are excellent sources of protein, but you don't have to eat just them. You can pair that with an animal source. So um, definitely encouraging people to just eat more plants, regardless of, you know, if they eat animal products or not. Now, we've made, uh, and I, we'll see if Carol can, can get this. I, I, uh, I cooked this package. It's Seeds of Change, organic uh, 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 quinoa. I always mispronounce this. Quinoa. Quin quinoa, quinoa and brown rice. So I'm going to put a little bit on my plate. Perfect. I believe that pouch has two servings, just so people know. Um, so and if you're two our... people, then it's perfect. And then I'm going to bring this back over here. I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to. Hey, I didn't burn the, uh, the wok. Look at that. You're right. a pro. That looks I, so good. Uh, oh, it smells great. Mm. And Mark, about the rice, um, you yes. could really use any whole grain. So if people like to make brown rice at home, that's perfect. If they want to use like a pad thai noodle, um, or a brown rice noodle, typical of pad thai, that's perfect as well. If people are on a restrictive type of diet and um, they want to eat perhaps low carb, low, low calories, they could do cauliflower rice. Personally, mm -hmm. I love brown rice and quinoa. I think it's the perfect mix, very nutritious. Mm -hmm. You know, as a kid, I didn't like uh, br Brussels sprouts. I didn't like cauliflower. I love cauliflower now. In, in I, I like, it, like it roasted, and I like Indian food. I, mm -hmm. And one of my favorites is is uh, cauliflower in a numer in numerous sauces from from that. Now, before I eat this, I've chopped up some green onions. Carol actually chopped those up. Thank you. And we, we talked about cashews. Are cashews a good nut to eat? Absolutely. These are, They're an these are dry roasted. Of, these are dry roasted. Dry roasted, perfect. And no salt. Um, no salt. That's better. Um, so, you know, you can always, if you're mixing it with a meal, there's always salt in your meal, on your, in the soy sauce. And, this meal, for example. Um, cashews are extremely nutritious, a great source of healthy fats. Uh, great mm -hmm. source of vitamin E and some minerals, um, very important for your health, along with almonds, um, you know, walnuts, Brazil nuts. But I do love cashews for this recipe. I think it's a perfect touch and adds a, a nice little crunch. Well, here, here goes, Carolina. I'm going to try oh, it. Oh, my goodness. Let's here we go. Let's see what you think of this very healthy meal. I'm going to go for it right now. Here we go. One. Well, I got to. Mmm. Mmm. Carol, you got to All right. Mmm. It's a little Woo! spicy. Success. But I love it. You mm. may have gone a little heavy on the chili sauce. I love it too. Yeah. Or <laughs> I have not one jar, oh, I have two so jars. Happy. Yeah. No oh, man, I'm doing the happy dance, folks. Woo! Well, um, before we leave, what are three things in your kitchen that you can't live without? Wow. All right. Mm hmm. First, green vegetables. That's something I have to eat every day. So my favorite is broccoli. Also, like you mentioned, making roasted uh -oh. broccoli. That's, I almost always have a green vegetable or something like spinach that I can add to smoothies. So that's the, the healthy me. Um, yeah. As it, another thing I can't live without, it's dark chocolate. You <laughs> can ask my husband. He came here Valentine's Day yesterday with three or four bars of chocolate. And I said, you definitely know the way to my heart. Um, that's a must. I think it's a great, you know, sweet treat. It's very nutritious and good for you if you're eating in the right amounts. I love it. Um, and then finally, I would say berries. Um, I love fruits, but you know, some fruits I'm like, eh, I could live without, but berries is something I really love having every day on, you know, on top of oatmeal or I make it into a smoothie or I just kind of snack on them throughout the day. 
Um, what kind so of yeah, berries? Those three blueberries, things you'll raspberries, find. blackberries? Yeah, so blueberries is probably the one that it's always in my fridge, no matter no matter what. Um, I personally love strawberries the most, but it's not always easy to find. It doesn't always taste good, you know, yeah. depending on the season. It can be very expensive. So blueberries, I think, are very accessible. You can buy them frozen if you're on a budget and put them in tried, smoothies. I haven't tried them frozen. Are they are those just as healthy as the, uh, yes, the fresh ones? Yes, absolutely. So the freezing process of fruits and vegetables actually preserves a lot of the nutrients. So um, if you are on a budget and you want to eat more vegetables, you can definitely rely on frozen vegetables. They are harvested at the peak of their nutrition, and then they are immediately um, flesh, they, they flesh cook it, cooking it fairly quickly, and um, things called blanching, and then they freeze it. So that freezing process retains all of the nutrients. So wow. that's actually a great option. Make sure you read ingredients, and it's just vegetables. So um, I asked this of some of our guests, and that is, um, oh, I forgot. By the way, if you are interested in putting more plants into your life, you can go to hungryforplants.com and we'll have that up in a second. Hungryforplants.com. That is Carolina's uh, website. Lots of information there. I saw a, a nice video you did with a, a vegan chocolate, dairy-free chocolate uh, the other day, right? Yes. Oh, a, a chocolate mousse that was so delicious. Um, oh. It's actually the secret ingredient is avocado. So if you want to try, you can't taste the avocado, but it's a much healthier and creamier alternative, I would say, to Ooh, chocolate I'll mousse. Ooh, I have to try that. I saw the recipe. I have to try that. So will you come back? It's very. Would you come Absolutely. back? Absolutely. You can have me anytime. We're, we're going to, oh, we're going to think already what we're going to make. Maybe we'll make a dessert next time that is okay. healthy and can we, delicious. Do you, is there... You know, um, we're running out of time, but Brazil is known for meat. I mean, yeah. uh, there, there are Brazilian re restaurants, and they come out with like 18 pounds of meat per person. You know, I've only eaten that, that is one, accurate, right? It, it, it's I'm not. A, but, you know, they're huge. Yeah, I remember those days. But um, I will say we're also known for our rice and beans, so maybe we can explore that next time. And our very yummy alcoholic beverage called caipirinha, which uses sugar, um, sugar cane, cane sugar alcohol, fresh fruits, and sugar. So we'll can, have to try that next time. Can we get that here in the U.S.? Yeah, you can, or you can use, you know, vodka or any... Got kind it. of like plain liquor. So we can definitely have fun with that. Well, uh, I thank you very much. I'm going to ask you to uh, hang on for us for just a couple of moments as I tell people what's coming up here on Mark Allen Cooks. Next week, we're going to have uh, Catherine Blyden Hunter on, and she's going to be making salmon cakes. Uh, we also have a radio TV executive friend of mine, his name is Jim Voltros. He lives in Florida now, but he was the manager of Channel 2, CBS, for years here in the Los Angeles Basin. So he's going to be here because he cooks. And we have other people. We have a, uh, a friend of mine, Christine Powers, is going to be with us sometime, uh, who is, uh, well, she, she has crystal bowls that sing, and she has a um, retreat in the Arida arrow in the mountains in like New York I can't pronounce that either anyway we'll, we'll we're gonna have a lot of fun over the next couple of months uh, please uh, subscribe to us on YouTube or or uh, Facebook we really appreciate your watching and thank you very much thank you Chris uh, uh, thank you Carolina, you, you were terrific. This is great. I really do like my own cooking. I, I really do. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.